It is Wednesday, it's the 23rd of January. I'm Monita Rajpal. This is CNN News Center, live from Hong Kong. A narrow victory that Benjamin Netanyahu says he'll turn into a broad coalition. An election setback on Tuesday means Israel's prime minister will now be wooing political partners to form a new government. Exit polls indicate that Netanyahu's Likud Betenyu party won about 31 seats in Israel's parliamentary poll. That's down from 42. They're now on the story. CNN's Atika Schubert joins us now live from Jerusalem. And Atika, what kind of a message are Israelis sending the prime minister with these results? Well, I think while the international community may be focused on things like the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, Israel's, you know, take on Iran, domestically, what voters here were most concerned about were the economy, affordable housing, improvements in education, and as you mentioned, that big hot-button issue of the Yeshati party, which was ending the exemption on mandatory military service for all. All right, Atika, thank you. Atika Shubert, there live for us from Jerusalem. North Korea is reacting defiantly to a United Nations resolution that condemned it for test-firing a rocket last month. North Korean leaders are promising to strengthen their military and nuclear capabilities. They said December's test launch was for peaceful purposes. Now from, but, uh, from Beijing and Stephen, it seems North Korea is more isolated than ever. Do they have any friends left? That's right, Manita. But remember, China, China's decision to join in approving this uh, resolution. And thank you, Stephen Jiang, there, live for us from Beijing. Britain's Prime Minister is paving the way for a new relationship with the European Union. David Cameron says he will hold a referendum on leaving the EU if he stays in power after the UK's next election. Morning, he says he hopes Britain stays inside, but wants to renegotiate the terms morning, of membership. Of course, we'll cross live to London for more on this story just a little bit later here on the show. But for now, a criminal court in Thailand has jailed a magazine editor for 10 years for insulting the king. The court says Somyot Pruksakasemsuk broke the law when his magazine published two satirical articles criticizing the monarchy. Japan's deputy prime minister is in hot water for saying that old people should, quote, hurry up and die to save the state the cost of providing them with medical care. Tara also admitted his comments were inappropriate. For the record, folks, Mr. Also is 72. A U.S. general caught up in the uh, scandal that forced former CIA director David Petraeus to resign has been cleared of wrongdoing. General John Allen was investigated over emails he was said to have sent allegedly to a woman. U.S. Was... Secretary of State Hillary Clinton is due to testify before two congressional committees today about last year's attack on the U.S. consulate in Benghazi in Libya. Jill Doherty explains. More than four months after Ambassador Chris Stevens and three other Americans died in Benghazi. Jill Doherty reporting there. You are watching CNN News Center live from Hong Kong. FIFA's general secretary admits match fixing is a disease. We'll bring you exclusive details on that interview just ahead. Stay with us. CNN News Center live from Hong Kong. I'm Monita Rajpal. A new crack in a difficult relationship. British Prime Minister David Cameron is promising voters a referendum on whether to quit the European Union. That's if he stays in power after the next general election due in 2015. He warned that if the public votes to pull out, there will be no turning back. Matthew Chance joins us now from London with more on that. And Mr. Cam what Mr. Cameron said, and Matthew, he's already garnered a lot of reaction there from across Europe. What about within London? That's right, across Europe, the French foreign minister has come out and said that this, uh, this idea, this proposal for a referendum on whether... All right, Matthew, thank you. Matthew Chance there in London. There has been a huge upset in Wednesday's tennis action at the Australian Open, and Alex Thomas joins us now from London to give us the details. Alex? Yes, Manita, while the world number one and defending champion Victoria Azarenka... All right, we look forward to that, Alex. Thank you very much. You're watching CNN News Center live from Hong Kong. You are watching CNN News Center live from Hong Kong. A new ballet opens this week at the famous Bolshoi Theater in Moscow, but the company's artistic director, Sergei Filin, isn't there to see his production come to life. 
He's in hospital, recovering from a vicious acid attack targeting him as he walked back to his home late last Thursday night. CNN's Phil Black brings us the latest on his recovery. This was Sergei Filip, only a few hours after someone threw sulfuric acid in. Let's take this time now to get a check of the global weather picture. Meteorologist Mari Ramos is at the World Weather Center with that. Mari. Hey, Monita. We're going to uh, take a quick look at New Zealand. This is a really... Uh, day today. Back to you. All right, Mari. We'll be paying attention. Thank you very much. And finally today, a win for common sense. A court in Australia has dropped a case against a goat. Yep a goat. Gary the goat was busted back in August for eating flowers outside a Sydney art gallery. I wonder if he'd comment on his hat. You are watching CNN News Center. I'm Onita Rajpal live at CNN Hong Kong. Thank you for joining us. Stick around though. We'll update you the headlines.